So the other day we discussed a leak about the PlayStation 5 Pro, which basically outlined a bunch of details regarding the GPU aspects of the uh, of the PS5 Pro. And again, this is apparently has multiple sources. This seems pretty much concrete, uh, besides the fact that it's not officially you know re revealed or announced. So of course we still have to say take it with a grain of salt. That said, we have more details regarding more of the specs of the PlayStation 4, uh, sorry, PlayStation 5 Pro um, that goes beyond just the GPU. So we have a little bit more about like the actual system memory. We have a little bit about the CPU, different things like that. So if you guys do enjoy this one, a like would be super appreciated. It really helps the channel. If you don't like it, it's completely fine. Let me know why so I can improve the content in the future. And be sure to subscribe for more. We talk about the games, play the games here on the channel. Again, this is coming from Insider Gaming. Throw it up on screen. Um, this is an exclusive, more PlayStation 5 Pro specs detailed. Um, so again, last week they were saying that, you know, they had the PS5 Pro GPU specs, which they actually go over a little bit again. Uh, they reiterate here, but let's go into this. So first things first, we've got the uh, system memory. Uh, so the standard PS5, this is for comparison, has 448 gigabytes uh, per second, 14 GT uh, slash S. Um, PlayStation 5 Pro, 576. So basically it's a 28% increase over the standard console in terms of the system memory. So again, that's a pretty substantial increase uh, in terms of system memory. Uh, as, as outlined, it says, uh, is that the, or sorry, also outlined that the PlayStation 5 Pro system memory is more efficient than the standard console. So the bandwidth gain may increase by over 28%. So this is a 28% increase, but it's also more efficient. So it might actually be te technically more uh, than that. Uh, in terms of the CPU, we have uh, the CPU is actually identical to the PlayStation 5, which a lot of people have been expressing some uh, some disappointment over if this, again, is to be believed. But the Pro has a high CPU frequency mode, which basically takes the CPU to 3.85 gigahertz, uh, which is a 10% increase over the standard console. So you can go into this high CPU frequency mode to get that 10% boost, but the CPU itself is identical, which again, a little bit disappointing if they're coming out the PS5 Pro and the CPU is identical. Maybe we don't need more CPU, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, it says that in high CPU frequency mode, more power is uh, allocated to the CPU and will downclock the GPU about, by about 1.5% which is not too, too much. It's just gonna result in 1% lower GPU performance. That's actually not too bad. So take 1% away from the GPU, give it to the CPU, and we're getting more than that. We're getting 45% uh, increase uh, in rendering anyways uh, to the GPU, which, which we're gonna see uh, again here in a second. The audio, it says the ACV in the PlayStation 5 Pro runs at a higher clock speed than the standard PlayStation 5, resulting in the ACM library having 35% more performance. That's, again, that's significant. Um, more convolution reverbs can be process more FFT or IFFT can be processed and again the GPU which was previously uh, revealed again rendering is 45% faster than the PS5 right uh, we have the you know two to three times extra you know ray tracing uh, f times four in some cases it's 33.5 teraflops which again is about um, what is that it's a, well the ps5 right now is 10.28 if i remember right 10.28 so that's about uh that's 66 percent isn't that isn't that am i doing the math right i don't know my math sucks playstation is spectral super resolution upscaling which is upscaling anti-aliasing solution they're gonna have support for up to 8k uh plan for future sdk uh version custom machine learning architecture and all that good stuff so again we talked talked about this in the last video um in addition it says 30 wg uh, wgps i'm not actually 100 sure what that is uh, running specialized BVH8 traversal shaders versus uh, 18 WG, uh, uh, WGPs running BH4 uh, transversal uh, shaders on the standard PlayStation 5. So I'm not, I don't know what that actually means, I'll be honest, but it's better. It's a boost, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's also understood that as a means to make the PlayStation Pro uh, 5 Pro as competitive, uh, not uh, Tom Henderson's phrasing here as possible. It will have a detachable disk drive, which will be identical to the last iteration of the standard PlayStation 5 and one terabyte of uh, storage space. So again, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what takes place here. Uh, right now, the P PS5 Pro is running on the SD uh, SKD 9.0 uh, and SD uh, sorry SKD 10.0 is expected in fall 2024, which apparently is a targeted re release date. No one knows how much this is going to be. No one knows exactly the release date. Just sometime, you know, maybe like Christmas time, fall or whatever. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Anything be you know uh, you know fabricated, but it, it seems like there's multiple different sources uh, that are are, are uh, kind of you know uh, supporting this uh leak this rumor if you will 
And it seems like there is reason to believe that it, it, it holds some weight at the very least. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, because I mean, that'd be, that would be a pretty significant boost. Like I said in the last video, being able to play at least 4K 60 instead of having to choose between higher frame rate or, you know, higher resolution would be nice or being able to do like maybe 1440 at 120 more consistently. So things like that, you know, being able to have high graphics and high frame rate would, would be really, really, really nice. But um, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, how this plays out, how it's actually gonna perform in real time, how it's gonna be optimized by developers and different games, different things like that. Uh, like I said, not a lot of, or not really as far as now, any kind of big first party, uh, you know, PS5 games coming out this year. So a little bit dry on that end. Maybe if they do release uh, this thing, maybe they're gonna, you know, drop, a new game or maybe a remastered game or, or maybe they're just going to say like you know the games that are currently out whether it's you know the newest final fantasy 7 rebirth or some of their other actual first party games uh maybe they're going to get a bump up somehow you know updates uh to utilize the ps5 pro better i don't know your guess is as good as mine let me know in the comments below do you think that you know this is even needed or do you think it's kind of pointless is it something that you might potentially you know purchase or would you probably just pass on it? Let me know your thoughts. Like I said, down in the comments. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, subscribe for it. I hope to see you guys soon in another one. Tell them, my friends, game on. And thanks for watching. Hey, you. What are you doing? Join the Skeleton Army. Do it today. Go until tomorrow because tomorrow will never come. The earth is going to fade. That's inevitable. The next second of your life is not even promised. So you better think about where you're going. And you might as well just join the Skeleton Army. Plus, we do kind of like you a little bit. So it'd be nice to see you around here. But if you don't want to, hey, you're lost. See you later.